Okay, hold on, people. Hold on. Just need to do something real quick. All right. Okay, so, oops, let me get that right. So as you can see here, let me get this out of the way. Indiana Fever to play 36 games on national television, national television in 2024 regular season. The WNBA announced today the Indiana Fever will play 36 of 40 regular season games on national television during the 25th regular season in franchise history. The first four games of the Fever regular season schedule will appear on ABC, ESPN, or Prime Video platforms. Throughout the regular season, Indiana will play two games on ABC, five games on ESPN, huge, one game on ESPN2, two games on CBS, one game on CBS Sports Network, those two games on CBS is huge, eight games on ION, four games on Prime Video, and 13 on NBA TV. Now, I do want to highlight when you see games on ION and the games on NBA TV, those games are available to watch simultaneously um, with the app. So it's shared, it's not exclusive. So anytime you see a WNBA game available to watch on NBA TV or on ION, it's also available to watch on the app because they don't have exclusive deals, exclusivity rights with the WNBA. Now, Prime Video and ESPN and CBS games, ABC, those games are only exclusive to those networks or to that streaming platform. They have an exclusivity rights deal. NBA TV obviously doesn't because they're the owner Big Brother, the owner of the the w, of the WNBA, okay, in a sense. So those games are just available on NBA TV and the app, as well as Ion, because Ion didn't do an exclusive deal, which works out good for Ion because they got these great games at a cheaper value. The reason why Prime Video wants it exclusive is because you have to subscribe to Amazon Prime. And they're going to get that little close to $15 a month and they're going to make a lot of money off of it. And so that's why they want it, it uh, versus sharing it with the app, because if they shared it with the app, many of you wouldn't subscribe to Amazon Prime Video. You would just watch it on the app. OK, you're paying about $15 a month for Amazon Prime Video versus only paying just $35 a year for the app. So many people wouldn't even subscribe to Amazon Prime. 
it's kind of shocking that people aren't subscribed to Amazon Prime anyway, because most people in America use Amazon to shop. <laughs> and so the better deals in terms of not paying um, for shipping and, and you know, all of that stuff is is free. And you get a lot of good deals shopping on Amazon. So it's kind of wild to me that a lot of people don't already have a subscription to Amazon Prime. But um, that's part of the deal of why they did an exclusivity deal. All eyes will be on Amazon Prime Video, which means what? You probably paid 12 to $15. And so they're just going to make a copious amount of money. The same deal with CBS. So you can't watch any of these games on the app that's on CBS or CBS Sports Network. They have an exclusivity deal, which means they pay the WNBA more than Ion and obviously NBA TV, which they don't have to pay the WNBA anything for that because they're partners with the NBA. So CBS, they want all eyes on CBS and CBS Sports Network, not shared eyes. So some of the viewers are on the app which means their eyes aren't on CBS or CBS Sports Network, which means that CBS, CBS Sports Network are losing ratings and they need those ratings and viewers so you can see these ads. These brands, these sponsors, these companies pay thousands of dollars, in some cases, a hundred thousand or more, so you can watch this 20 second, 30 second, 59 second ad. And we need you to watch that ad because they paid us 100 grand, 50 grand, 30 grand for it, okay? And when they, they, they're they able to use these viewership numbers to lure in more sponsors and more ad buyers, okay? Ad spot buyers. And they're able to sell an ad spot at a high price and be able to justify that price based on viewership numbers, extrapolation, based on viewership numbers. So CBS can tell Huggies or CBS can tell Kia, we're charging 80 grand for this uh, 10 second ad, this 15 second ad, or we're charging $250,000 for this one minute ad, ad spot. And Huggies or Kia will say, why should I pay you $250,000 for 59 seconds? Well, because our ratings, we project our ratings for this Indiana Fever game on CBS to peak at 10 million in average 7 million. Oh, crap. Hell yeah, I'll pay $250,000 for a, a minute ad spot. And so that, that's what it is. But they couldn't do that if half of the eyes were on the WNBA app. And this is why they paid a premium price to get that exclusivity rights deal with the WNBA. And the same thing with ABC ESPN. You will not be able to watch any of these ABC ESPN games on the app because they have an exclusivity rights deal. OK, and it's the same reason for Amazon and CBS. We want all eyes because we're trying to charge. A lot of money for this 20 second, 10 second, 15 second, 30 second, one minute ad spot. And we believe our projection is that this game is going to peak at 12 million and average 8 million or peak at 9 million and average 6 million. So it justifies why we're charging you $100,000 or $200,000 for 30 seconds. OK, and we couldn't get we couldn't project that or put those numbers on the negotiation table with Snickers, with Nestle, with Allstate, with State Farm, if half of the eyes are on the WNBA app. So this is why they pay that premium price for the exclusivity rights deal, where these games are exclusively only available to watch on ABC ESPN, CBS, CBS Sports Network or Amazon Prime Video. Ion didn't do that exclusive deal. So it worked out good for Ion because Ion does amazing production. Everything is seamless and smooth. Okay. I mean, it, it just really is. It's just, it's streamlined. It's, it's perfect. So Ion got a cheaper value. Um, excuse me. Ion paid a cheaper price, low price for great value.
but they just don't have an exclusivity deal, which means some eyes will be on the app, some eyes will be on Ion. But that's fine <laughs> because it worked out so well for them last year that they called Kathy Engelbert and, and, and said, we, we would like to purchase six more games. And that's what they did last season. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it, listen, it just works out perfectly. So I just wanted to explain that part. Um, we're not going to go into the ticket sales and all of that. So we could we could look at this. And May 14th on ESPN2, they will be at Connecticut. I think ESPN made a mistake. This should be on ESPN1. But Caitlin Clark is going to bring people to ESPN2 anyway, so it really doesn't matter. <laughs> but I still would have, have liked to see this game on ESPN. Now, in ESPN mind, they're probably thinking that, well, yeah, Indiana is the star because of Caitlin and Aaliyah Boston and her team, Melissa and Kelsey. Eh, Connecticut is boring. Well, that's just not the case. I mean, Connecticut has future Hall of Famers on that team and Dewana Bonner and Alyssa Thomas. That is a freaking stat WNBA Finals roster still to this day with Stephanie White. So that makes absolutely zero sense why you wouldn't put this on ESPN. This is a boss matchup. This is one of the, the most grueling tests for a rookie and for a team trying to make a leap in its second year under Christy Sides. So this is a gauntlet. This is an impossible match. If Caitlin Clark in the Indiana Fever can beat Connecticut, they can beat anyone. Okay, so and this is also a game where Bree Jones is going to show she's back. So this is a brutal, like ESPN didn't think this through. They were like, oh, this isn't a splashy, sexy name. So let's just make them get on ESPN too. This should have been on ESPN or ABC, period. But anyway, moving along. So two days later on the 16th at 7 p.m., they're at home versus New York. And this is huge because this is going to be a packed arena. Remember, Indiana Fever, they have the number one rated arena, sports arena in America, rated the number one sports arena. It's the Pacers, but they spent around close to $400 million upgrading and renovating it. This is why during uh, Melissa Smith's rookie year, they were playing in three different facilities because this arena was being renovated and upgraded and they paid about close to $400 million to do so. Remember, they just hosted the NBA all-star game there and it was rated the number one sports arena in America. Number one. So these people are going to have an amazing time there. That place is going to be flooded, packed. Uh, and so that's huge, but that's on prime video, but that that's huge for Jeff Bezos. That's huge for Prime Video because there is tens of millions of people are going to purchase Amazon Amazon Prime, 12 to $15 a month, and he's going to get a huge bump, a huge increase. So this is huge for Amazon Prime. The problem is that you got a lot of people who just don't feel like spending that little pathetic 12 to $15 a month. For whatever reason, it just is, you know, these are the same people. I, I guess some of these people smoke a lot of cigarettes or they probably feel like they could use that little $14 on some weed or something or maybe a, a bottle of liquor. I don't know what. <laughs> maybe they want to go to McDonald's and spend that little $12 on some cheeseburgers. I have no idea. But, you know, it will be, it, to me, the smart thing is to get Amazon Prime. It's just a little measly $12 to $15 a month. So what? You were gonna go to you were gonna go to Burger King or or somewhere and and waste that you waste that every day on something just come on stop it so but this is huge for Prime Video I still think this needs like OTA like ABC CBS the first game at home but Amazon is like we paid them a good amount of money so they're gonna make a lot of money off of this third game. Two days later, May 18th at 1 p.m., which is awesome. 
at New York. This is huge. Okay. So you got a home and away game back to back. This is absolutely huge. Huge, you guys. And this is on ABC OTA. That means over the air, over the air antenna. That means everyone is watching this because everyone has ABC. If you have a regular TV with a little antenna or digital antenna, boom, everyone has ABC OTA. And so this game, the fact that it's in New York City, Barclays, this game is going to be a sellout. Uh, Barclays before WNBA game. I don't believe they've ever at Barclays. I don't think they ever had a sellout where it was standing room only and probably not even standing room only. I don't believe that's ever happened, even with the big three or the big four in New York with Stewie, John Quayle, Courtney Vandersloot and Sabrina Ionescu. And some might even say the big five when you add in Maureen Johannes off the bench. Some might even say the big six when you talk about Benai Jelani. And if she would have played Han Shu, you could have said the big seven. You could have said seven up, right? Or you could have said seven eleven. Okay, so that that's sort of what it is. And this is going to be huge. So I'm just happy that this is on ABC. Now, I, maybe ABC tried to fight for that first game the, at, at, at Indiana playing New York. Amazon and Prime were probably fighting over that, but I think ABC felt that, you know what, being in New York, that's probably smarter. We'll take that one. Maybe Prime Video wanted that one. And ABC was like, no, you can have the New York game in Indiana. We'll take the New York game on ABC in New York. Okay. And so I think that was probably a bidding war for that. And then you come back home from New York two days later. This is a grueling schedule. And part of the reason for this is because it's an Olympic year. So this is a grueling schedule because they're only getting two days off in between games. So you're you're at home on ESPN playing Connecticut. But at least it's it's East Coast. So. But then two days later, you're uh, at Seattle and this is also on ESPN. So that's pretty huge. And you're going up against Skylar Diggins, okay? You're going up against Jewel Lloyd and Neka Gumake. And I mean, just loaded, just absolutely loaded. As he is just loaded. And so that, that's a big time roster over there. And that's another true test. So that's going to be extremely interesting. But that's also on ESPN. And that's at 10 o'clock at night. So obviously they they have to get in that West Coast audience. So... And then two days later, <laughs> you go to L.A. and that's on Ion and Ion is going to love that because in L.A. you might be facing Camila Cardoso again. You could be potentially facing Angie Reese. Uh, obviously, you most likely will face Cameron Brink, but you could probably be facing Cameron and Camila Cardoso or Cameron Brink and Rakia Jackson. So that's interesting as well. That's on Ion TV, but that's also available on the WNBA app. OK, so then one day later, this is a back to back at 9 p.m. You're going to Las Vegas. This game should not have been on NBA TV. But the benefit to this is that this is going to get the WNBA app, the WNBA, a lot of money because you have to purchase the app if you don't have NBA TV. NBA TV isn't included in a basic cable satellite package. You would have to spend extra for, for Xfinity, Comcast, or Dish Network, or um, freaking DirecTV, you have to spend extra to get NBA TV. Now, NBA TV is available for Hulu. It's available for YouTube TV. It's available for Fubo TV. It's it's not available. Yeah, it's available, available for Sling TV, except Sling makes you pay an extra $15 to watch it. So most people aren't going to purchase Hulu plus live TV. Most people aren't going to purchase YouTube TV or Sling TV and pay that extra 15 or Fubo TV. So people or and most people will not upgrade their cable or satellite package to get NBA TV, which means what? This is a smart move by the WNBA. You're going to spend that thirty five dollars to watch it on the WNBA app. This is freaking Asia Wilson, Kelsey Plum, Chelsea Gray, Jackie Young, Candace Parker, Becky Hammond. 
This is this is in freaking Las Vegas. OK. And so, listen, you're going to spend thirty five dollars a year to see this. I mean, you just are. So this is huge for them. It's not so great for ratings. OK, but it's just huge for the WNBA. NBA TV will see a lot of big time ratings. This game will get millions of people watching it on NBA TV. That will be the first in its history. OK, but it would get so much more if it was on ESPN, ABC or CBS. OK, but this this is a huge money maker for the app. So then they get finally get three days off, thank God. And then they got to play Los Angeles Sparks again. That's on NBA TV. And then they get two days off. And then they got to play Seattle on Prime Video. They will be in Indiana. They got another back to back June 1st, the 2nd. And that's a wow. That's a home and in a way. And that both of those games are on NBA TV, which is just huge for the app. The app is going to make a lot of money. So the WNBA was really thinking about themselves, to be honest with you, which is great because the more money they make, the more that they're able to spend on other things, you know, able to cover different expenses. And, and so all of that matters. So it was a strategic move. Um, but they're also setting this up to where Amazon, I mean, Ion will try to purchase some of these games like they did last year. For some of you who don't know, um, Ion TV already purchased a certain amount of WNBA games in their original deal, but it was going so good for Ion that they called the WNBA and asked, could they have six more games? Those six games were these NBA TV games you see, and Ion bought those out. And, and, and so these games are up for sale. Anytime you see NBA TV, they're up for sale. I'm pretty sure Ion is probably going to buy more of these games. It wouldn't shock me. So, um, yeah, June 1st and June 2nd, Chicago, New York. These are going to be huge. Uh, June 7th, finally, they get five days off from June 7th, from June 2nd to the 7th. That's a blessing. They're going to need it. And, uh, yeah, so NBA TV and then they're away for the next three games. New York, Washington, Connecticut, NBA TV, Ion, NBA TV. These games will also be available to watch on the app. As well as the Atlanta game, they get three days off from June 10th to June 13th. That game will also be on NBA TV and the app. Now, some of these games, when you don't see NBA TV, some of these games are exclusive only to the app. But I guarantee you this game is on NBA TV and the app. So then you go to June 16th. Or maybe this game won't be on NBA TV. Maybe this game is just app exclusive or one of these Facebook, Twitter, Twitter games. This could be a Twitter game or a Facebook game. You know how the WNBA does. So then they get three days off. And then June 16th, they're on CBS, not CBS Sports, not CBS Sports Network, but CBS, which means this is OTA over the air. Everyone has this regular TV. You have CBS, so you don't need cable or anything. So this is going to generate huge ratings and it's at 12 p.m. So this is going to be a huge moneymaker. It's going to be a lot of kids at this game. And this is just absolutely huge, absolutely huge, man. And so and you would say, well, Chicago. Well, yeah, I mean, Chicago could have Rakia there. Chicago could have Angel there. Chicago could have Camilla Cardoso there. So this is huge. And this is on CBS. And then they get three days off, thank God. And then June 19th, there's in both of these games are still at home. So then the Washington game is on NBA TV. This game, this Washington game would have never been on NBA TV or Ion, these Ion games, if Elena Deladon was playing. But the fact that she's sitting out this season, she's probably going to regret it because she never thought women's basketball would get this kind of attention. I know she feels guilty. Uh, listen, Elena Deladon takes advantage and she over exaggerates her injuries and it wasn't even an injury thing for her she just felt that she needed to just sort of take a sabbatical and just uh you know relax and get away from it all because in her mind yeah the WNBA is growing year over year but it's not exponential growth she never thought that she would see these numbers that we just saw in the tournament and how that's going to carry over to the WNBA 
Caitlin Clark wasn't even a thought in her mind when she made the decision to sit out this season. So this goes to show you that sometimes your judgment can be a bit wayward. And so this was poor judgment from her. And I guarantee you, she wants back in on this action. Sue Bird is regretting retiring because Sue Bird wants to face off against Caitlyn. She wants some of this action. OK, and so I guarantee you, uh, Elena Deladon is regretting sitting out because you're, you're not spe you're not all that special anymore. OK, you're not all that special. And the fact that you would just throw your team under the bus and leave them without you. Because in your mind, eh, you're Ed, you can do what you want to do. The WNBA season kind of lame anyway. And now, boom, it's not lame. It never was lame. It was just held back on purpose by men. So now you bring Caitlin Clark. We're getting all of these nationally televised games. Millions of people will be watching. And now you feel guilty that you stiffed arm your own league and your own team. You got to feel stupid, Elena Deladon. And this is one of the reasons why the Washington Mystics games are relegated to NBA TV, the WNBA app, and Ion TV, because Elena Deladon is in playing. Shame on you, because you thought this was going to be a typical lame season, and you never saw 18.7 million people. Okay, so your judgment is way off. So then you get to, they get two days off, the Atlanta Dream game, Ion TV. That could be Nika Mule there. They already got, they moved Jessica Carter up. So they're saying Jessica Carter is going to go to the land of dream. It sort of makes sense because she's from Georgia. Or that could be Nika Mule. That could be Elizabeth Kidley. So Elizabeth isn't going to play, but it's either going to be Nika Mule or Jessica Carter. That's an interesting game. Talented roster, by the way. Ryan Howard, um, Haley Jones, very talented roster. So and then they get two days off. But they're on a the roll for five straight games. So they got a crazy road run here. Of five straight games. Damn, let me see this. Yeah, so from June 21st to July 2nd, they're on the road. Wow. At, at, at Atlanta, at Chicago, and June 27th at Seattle, but that's a big time game. Finally, big time games again, prime video. But the really big time games is at Phoenix, ESPN. That's the game where they were promoting and marketing uh, the GOAT versus the Rook on that flyer they put out there with DT. So that's on ESPN. That's going to get crazy ratings. July 2nd, 9.30 p.m. at Las Vegas. That's the one where they moved to that T-Mobile arena, whatever arena that is, that seats 20,000. That's the game right there. And so that's going to be on ESPN. Huge, huge ratings. July 6th. They'll be back at home in Indiana playing New York. Huge ratings. That's CBS OTA over the air antenna. And then for the next two games, July 10th, July 12th, you're playing Washington and Phoenix. NBA TV app available um, and in Ion TV also available to watch on the app. Washington and Phoenix. And in July 14th, they get three days off from the 14th to the 17th, which is great. And so they also get three home games in a row, which is great. And then they got to go two more row games back to back. But both of these games are on ESPN, nationally, national television. And so that's huge against Minnesota, against Dallas. Now, Minnesota could have Andrew Reese there. So Minnesota and then Dallas. And that's huge because Minnesota is going to be packed. And that is a state of the art upgraded arena. That's going to be packed. And then obviously at Dallas, which is huge for them. So that's that's freaking huge, man. And after that, you you got August the 16th. So this is when they do that whole Olympic break, which is a blessing because their bodies get to recover. And if Caitlin Clark isn't playing in the Olympics, she really gets to recover. Aaliyah Boston won't be able to recover. I think they'll keep her on the team. They probably going to keep Caitlin uh, because Caitlin is going to bring in a lot of international eyes on the Olympics. And the Olympics is probably lobbying the WNBA and the NBA to make sure, um, and the Olympic Committee, uh, Team USA, to make sure that Caitlin is on that team because she's going to draw huge ratings. I just hope that they have Caitlin Clark sleeping in the hyperbaric chamber and she's doing cryotherapy. That's what I hope, okay, because she she needs it. She needs it. That's just brutal. So 
So when they get back, August the 16th, we're starting to end up getting into the fall when we, you start seeing that September, that late August. So Ion TV, Phoenix, August 18th, ABC, huge. Uh, uh, they'll be at home. They get two home games. That's great. Huge. And then the next five games, app games slash NBA TV slash Ion, um, two away games, Connecticut, home, Chicago away, Dallas, uh, at Dallas. And then you go, now we're, we're getting into the fall. So you're getting into like September and you got a Los Angeles game. They'll be in Indiana at home on CBS Sports Network. That's huge. And that's huge for CBS Sports Network, by the way. And then you're getting into these app games slash Ion slash NBA TV slash Twitter slash Facebook, which is the Atlanta Dallas. Um, listen, you got back to back against Las Vegas, September the 11th, which is a day to honor the victims, the fallen victims of, you know, that terror attack on the world, the Twin Towers, World Trade Center. So, um, Yes. So September 11th, Las Vegas, both of these games are in Indiana. So this is huge for ownership uh, of the Indiana Fever slash Pacers to get all of this money from ticket sales and concession sales and merchandise sales and bringing that money to the local economy. So Indianapolis will get probably for both games, <laughs> both days, you might see, I would say, 60 million to 70 million dollars. Uh, to the local economy, boosted the local economy for having these back-to-back -back games against this kind of team. So this is huge. Um, but this is also predicated upon whether or not the Indiana Fever are successful and if Caitlin Clark is performing well. And so I just wanted to put that out there. And in September 15th, this is another game where this is probably a Twitter game, a Facebook game, plus an app game against Dallas. They'll be at home. They actually get five home games. No, actually six home games. So this is huge for Aaliyah Boston, Alyssa, Kelsey Mitchell, Caitlin Clark, Lexi Hall. I mean, uh, Katie Lou, Erica, this is grace. This is huge for them because they get the rest. Anytime you're at home and you see, oh, we only get two days off in between games and, or three days off in between games, doesn't matter. The fact that you're at home for six straight games, that's huge because you get to go home and rest. You're not on some freaking charter flight or some freaking commercial flight. You're a freaking home, man. You don't have to get on a bus. You get to drive to these games and then go home and do your own recovery and all of this stuff. So this is absolutely huge for them. And then a final game. Why do they have September 1995, 95? That's insane. So anyway, the final home game. <laughs> the final home game is at Washington on Prime Video. So finally, the Mystics get something huge like prime video finally and let's just hope the indiana fever are playing amazing um, basketball and like i said before with the addition of caitlin clark that instantly puts the indiana fever into the playoffs i mean instantly just instantly so what i want to do we're going to end this but before we end this i just want to get some of you new people Nice little taste of the Indiana Fever and in, in your mind, just insert Caitlin Clark. And I believe they're going to draft Kate Martin in a second round or another big. But I think it's either Kate Martin or another big. So let's back at it is. Let's back at it is. And let's watch this. Hold up. We're doing the things that we need to do to put this franchise back where it belongs, where it's supposed to be. We are supposed to be a perennial playoff team, and if you're not careful, we're going to bite you in the butt and win a championship. That's who we're supposed to be. Well, the record still leaves some to be desired. Indiana playing a lot better as the season has gone on. They've been a lot more competitive, so I think that that is kind of one of the things that you expected. You expect some growing teams when you have a very young team. We have to trust the work that you're doing, right? There's no 
magic, you know, snap of the fingers, okay, now you're going to understand it. It's, there is just a process of continuing to work and continuing to work. And the more you put the work in, the more comfortable you're going to feel and the more confident that you're going to be on the floor and understand that you are getting better. Here are the areas you're getting better, and we're going to keep working at it until you see that improvement in yourself. I really came into this year and knew me and my staff were going to do a lot of teaching, just a lot of making sure that we removed a lot of bad habits and implement good habits and habits that were going to stick with us. We were going to practice until it's perfect. We're going to not skip a step, I promise you. I was looking for Chrissy Sides type coach, you know, and I, so many people had mentioned her to me. You know, she values defense, she's high energy, culture matters. And then once we hired her and she started sharing with me the type of people that she wanted to bring on her staff, I was like, wow, this is great. This is perfect. This is exactly what the fever needs. It's exactly what our returning players need. When I was able to get out and hire the people that I thought would help me be the most successful, I really, I was hoping to get Jesse Miller on board with me. She was living out of the country in Germany. Great basketball coach, loyal. You know, for me, loyalty and who you are as a human being is so important. And Paul's been in the NBA. I thought he could really help me with an edge of what's going on in the NBA right now. We can implement that into our, our system now. He's been awesome. Kareem of Christmas, my gosh, can't say enough about her. And our players. Um, just really fed off of, of her because of her experience when she was with us. And then Jared, he's been here before. He just fit. He fit with what we wanted, what we needed. These guys have worked their tails off to make sure that we are just, just talking about playoffs and championships. You know, sometimes you can get a little bit ahead of the process. And I think right now, year two, we're a little bit further along because we've gotten that first pick. She has been phenomenal this season. As a rookie, leading the WNBA, shooting 61% from the floor, coming off of an all-star stunning appearance in Las Vegas. She's done it all without thinking. No hesitation. Just the readiness to make the right move play. It was, it was a great season. I loved every single moment of it. It was great to learn and experience being in this new league, something that I've dreamt about since I started playing basketball. She has the tools to be very successful in this league. I think she has the work ethic. She's just gifted in so many ways, but the girl just doesn't want to lose. She wants to win every game. She wants to win every drill. She wants to win every shooting, you know, anything we're doing shooting. And when you have somebody who wants to compete that hard, um, that's hard. That's hard to, to go against pop someone when they just have that kind of competitive spirit and um, wants to win that bad. Maturity's got to happen fast for us. And I knew I needed a point guard, somebody that I could blame everything on, <laughs> and she'd be okay with it. Just culture-wise, I think that Christy came in with a plan, and I was part of that plan, and it was to be a leader, and I think I did a fairly well job um, in that position. Um, just trying to lead my teammates in a way to give them that eight-year experience that I've gotten. Just to have her, um, her loyalty and her trust, and just to be in that locker room with players who didn't know me, she was able to help bridge that gap. And um, that's, I've really appreciated that. Melissa Smith is doing a great job leading her team this year. She's been extremely dynamic, making sure she's on the board, shooting those open shots. I think her confidence is growing game by game. She's doing a great job getting her teammates open and being coachable. Melissa Smith has been on fire lately for the Fever. She had almost 30 points against the Phoenix Mercury. My approach was just to get better, you know, just work on things that I wasn't as good at last year and just improve in every area. And I've been working on shooting threes a lot and making and moves to the left and just improving on everything. And you've seen her game mature in that way. For her to be able to assume that role and continue to learn through some of the adversity that she's faced. She's got to continue to do that every night. She's just a mismatch for whoever they put on her because she's so good around the basket as well. I feel like I've gotten a lot smarter with reading my defenders, seeing the improvement and just seeing how much of a difference this year is than last year. I've always prided myself on being more of a, you know, more action than I do talking. I think my teammates, every last time, know that about me. 
for me, I want to be in lead in ways that didn't involve me saying so much, me being a pest, me being that person that was more doing more talking than I was doing. So for me, it was about making sure my, my teammates felt comfortable being around me. We always respect each other. And I think leading for me and cultivating this team was about making sure people knew who I was and what I wanted to bring, bring to the table for all of us. The best thing, though, that separates this year and last year is the fact that we saw that last year, but they just didn't have that fourth quarter kick, that edge. But we see it a lot uh, here today. I feel like this league is really competitive. And being here for two years, I definitely feel like my confidence has grown. I feel like I'm finding areas where I fit, and that's something that's really hard in the WNBA to try to figure out where you fit on the team. And I feel like I'm getting to the spot where I can feel confident in my role. Seeing the growth out of our team just from the first day of training camp when we all came as a bunch of individuals from a different backgrounds to coming together as a team, really buying into you know, the process, really buying into the culture that Coach Christie wanted for us. I had players in this league just recognize like, dang coach, like what y'all are doing is really incredible and it's really awesome what's happening in Indiana. Coming from players, that's incredible. These guys showed up every single day, every day of practice, every video session, and never gave in. That's just toughness, and they bought into this vision, you know, that, that we have collectively, that we talked about, and I think these guys have just bought into what, and they see it, they see what can be here. I think it's an exciting time for the Indiana Fever. The, the way we finished the season, we beat several playoff teams last year. We showed com continued improvement. We've got the nucleus of our team back. We saw Liss and, and Kelsey and Aaliyah Boston continue to get better. And now we've got this first pick again. And I just think it's an exciting time. If, if I was a local person, I'd be getting my season ticket right now because I want to tell you what, we're going to have some sellouts. All right, y'all. Y'all take care. God bless. May 14th, baby. We're doing the thing.